Hello, I'm Sharon Aguilar and welcome to day four of the Green Style Sundial Leggings Sew Along. Today we are putting on our waistband. So there are three different options for the waistband. There is a solid front one, there is a crossover one, and then there's also an option where you can combine the two. So on this video, I, I show all three different ones. So look at the video guide, skip to the section that covers the waistband that you are making. And then one of the questions that I got before I started filming these videos was how to handle the thickness um, on the double waistband. So on the double waistband, if your machine is struggling to sew through all those layers, the first thing is do not skip any of the basting. Baste like crazy, make sure that you are able to treat all of the waistband as just one piece, that you're not fiddling with each of the layers. So don't skip that step. Um, another thing is increase your needle size. So you might be fine sewing with maybe a size like an 80-12 needle through the rest of them but you're going to if you're doing the double waistband especially if you're using a thicker fabric you're going to need um, a stronger needle just to get through all this so um, that is something to think about also um, you don't have to top stitch unless you just really want to your machine might struggle through the top stitching if it does one of the things that you can think about, um, like if it's a cover stitch, is trying to keep the layers even as they feed through. Um, it struggles whenever it has uneven. So you can even use like a hump jumper or a piece of um, Velcro. You, like you can use a piece of Velcro to like next to the fabric to make it feed evenly through the machine. And I think that's one of the things that machines will struggle with is whenever um, it has underneath your presser foot part of it that is like lower than the other. So try and feed through as evenly as you can and increasing your needle size as well as having fresh needles in your machine. Speaking of needles, you wanna make sure you are using a stretch needle um, or a ballpoint needle, and a needle that is specific to stretch fabrics. Okay, so let's get into sewing in our waistband. Okay, so let's do the waistband um, for the full waistband option. So you are going to have four waistband pieces to cut out. You will have your inner waistband and your inner waistband is essentially the lining. It's the part that no one is going to see. So I suggest using a soft fabric that has really, really firm, nice um, recovery that will help you keep your leggings on um, for your waistband, for your inner waistband. And these are cut on the fold. So the fold is right here. This is the inner back and the inner back will go have a dip up. And then you have your inner front that's also cut on the fold and make sure that you cut it on the fold right here and not here. And it's going to have your dip down. So this is your front, this is your back. You're gonna have a, the same thing going on the outer and this is the part that you will see on the outside um, that you'll wanna cut out of your main fabric. You'll have your front that dips down and you'll also have your back, the same that dips um, up. So the difference in these is that your, your mane should be slightly taller than your lining so that the seam will roll to the inside. And that's the reason you don't just have two pieces because if you, which you can do if you want to, um, that would give you the seam at the very top if you had them the exact same. But since this one's a little bit smaller, um, that seam will roll to the inside so that you don't see your lining peeking out. Okay, so to put these together, I'm gonna start with my inner waistband. I'm gonna put these two pieces right sides together. So determine which one is your right side. And then just lay them on top of each other with the right sides facing. And then they're not gonna be exactly even. You just wanna line up the edges like this and then sew this seam with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and you want it to be a stretch stitch. So I'll sew here and then I will move this to meet this line. And I'm going to sew here. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna put these two together. So I'm just going to put the right side of that one facing up and the right side of this one facing down. And then I'm gonna line them up at the side the side of the waistband seam. I'm gonna sew here and I'm gonna sew here. So I'm gonna take these to my serger. You can also use a stretch stitch on your sewing machine and then sew these four lines. Okay, so one thing I forgot to mention is that on this front piece, you can um, 
line it with a power net or a tech sheen if you want extra firm tummy control um, to help also to help keep the waistband up more, um, especially if you omit the clear elastic, that you may find that helpful. I've found that some of that just has to do with your body shape, whether you need the extra hold there. Um, the more hourglass you are, the more the waistband is likely to stay up on top of your hips. Um, and also making a higher rise helps with that. Okay, so I'm gonna take just one of these and I'm going to turn it right side out like this. And I'm gonna leave the other one inside out and I'm going to slip this inside of here. And now I have their right sides facing and I wanna make sure the right side of the front is facing the right side of the back. So I'm gonna flip this over. And now we have, it should look like this, where the wrong sides of both fabrics are facing out and then the right sides are facing each other. So now I am going to sew this top seam all along here. On my side seam right there, I've made it to where the seam allowance is nest, to where one's going one way and the other is going the other way. That'll help it not to be as bulky. Okay, so now I'm going to go along the top and I'm going to sew this with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and you can add your clear elastic in this step. You can feed it through the hole in your serger foot. Um, or after you are done sewing the seam, you can go back on your sewing machine and just zigzag it on just directly on top of the seam you've sewn. Here is what my waistband looks like now. And at this point, if you are gonna add any clear elastic or any other kind of elastic to the seam to help it to um, stay up on your body and your leg is not to slip, now is the time to go back. And whenever you do add the elastic, do not stretch the elastic at all. You wanna just lay it, keep it flat. Otherwise, it'll make it too tight. Um, now we can take our waistband and now it is a waistband. We're ready to apply it to our pants. Okay, so now we're gonna take our waistband and we're going to baste the lining and the mane together around the bottom. And this is a super, super important step um, for doing the, um, the V point on this waistband. You don't have to do it the entire bottom. I would say just do it a few inches on each side, just so that um, your edges are all even right here. Um, it'll make it easier to do the V on the next. Okay, so once we have that basted, we're gonna do our V just like we would a V neck on a V neck t-shirt. So I'll show you that as soon as we have this basted. Okay, now that you have that small area basted, I am going to put the waistband right sides together, the point of the waistband facing the point of the leggings. So just like that. And then I'll either you can put a pin or a clip or right there, the point on the point. And I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and I find it easier to sew this from the pants side as opposed to the waistband side. And I'm gonna show you the reason for that. The reason for that is you're gonna have all this extra fabric right here when you go to sew along this edge. And on here, you're not. So if you sew it on this side, you're gonna end up sewing creases on this side. So is what I'm gonna do is once I have this matched up, is I'm gonna match up along here. And then I'm going to start sewing on this side. And I'm gonna sew with a three inch seam allowance until I get to the seam on my pants right here, this center seam. And then I can pivot and move all the fabric behind me and then sew down the other seam. Okay, so I'm gonna take you to the machine and show you that on the machine. Okay, so you have the V waistband, which is the front waistband, facing the V dip on the front of your pants. And I'm just going to start about two inches away. I use my sewing machine for this part. It's really um, best if you just use a stretch stitch to get this right, and then you can finish sewing the rest of the waistband on with your serger. But you wanna do this step using, I'm gonna use like a triple straight stretch stitch. And I'm just sewing these few inches And if this is your first time to do uh, like a V point, you might wanna just use a regular straight stitch that you can rip out if something goes wrong. Okay, so now I put my needle down when I get to this seam line and I'm going to 
then make take all this extra fabric and push it to the back and then make this line up the next area and then I'll put my presser foot down and go a few inches you're not trying to go that far right here you're just trying to get this v-point right so let me show you this is what it looks like on that side and this is what it looks like on the right. You can kind of see my basting stitches right there. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those and then I'll do the rest on my serger. Okay, so we did the V part. So I'm just gonna lay my pants out like this. So you can see the front of the waistband is attached to just the front of my pants. And now I'm going to put the waistband around the rest of them so well before I do that I'm gonna mark where my side points are since this one doesn't have a side seam I'm gonna put my front seam up against my back seam and then just see what the halfway point is for those I'm gonna make a mark with my marker on the inside you can't see it on the outside so I'll do it on the inside and I'm gonna do the other side so now I've made marks um, halfway between my front and back, and that'll tell me where to put this side waistband seam. So I'm going to match this side seam right here, right sides together to the mark that I made right here. And then now I'm going to do right sides together this point, the center point of my back to this center point right here. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. This side seam will go to the mark I've made over here. So now I'm gonna turn my pants inside out because I'd rather sew, this time I'd rather sew on the waistband side. Whoops, I ripped that off. I'd rather sew on the waistband side whenever I'm attaching it on my serger than on the other. So I'm gonna turn them inside out and I'm going to sew all around. Oh man, I, they don't look like pants right now. So my waistband is right sides together and it's inside my pants because I, I want to sew on the waistband side. So you're going to have to mildly stretch it for it to fit. It shouldn't be a big stretch, but just mildly stretch. So I'm going to start at one point. And since I've already kind of basted that, it's going to be super easy to do this part because I'm not worried about it. So now I'm just getting all these, the edges of the fabric to just meet up. Should have three layers right here, unless you put like power net or texting in for more tummy control, then you'll have that extra layer on the inside lined up against the lining. And you see that I'm not like doing a major stretch on this, it should just be a very slight stretch. Unless you um, are using a smaller size waistband than your pants, then you'll have a slight stretch, slightly more than what I'm stretching. Okay, I want to show you how, so like where I basted it is, you can see the difference between it, where I sewed this V point with a stretch stitch and where I did my serger. So now I'm going to go back to my machine and just kind of connect those. Um, one of the ways, I didn't trim the seam allowance like I normally would have to make it 3 eighths because the serger is set for a quarter inch seam allowance right here. So I could go ahead and do that to make it all connect, but I don't want to. I'm just going to connect them like this um, using my machine. Okay, so this is what my V point looks like there and looks like there. And it, if I was using the same seam allowance all the way around, I like to have more in my back though. So I always like to have a quarter inch seam allowance over this. It gives me just a little bit extra to pull over my butt. Um, and then there's the front. So at this point, you can top stitch the seam down if you would like to have top stitching right there on just whatever you're using. Um, but if you don't want top stitching there, I usually don't. Um, I don't top stitch that area. So now all that's left is to try on our pants and to hem them. Okay. On the back of your waistband, you're going to want to make a notch or a mark. If you have like a fabric marker, you'll want to do that. Um, I like to do it on both sides just so that you can see what is the center back. If you do not have enough fabric 
um, on the width wise, just because of you're working with a limited amount, you can actually cut two of these. You'll just want to add a seam allowance, either a quarter inch or three eighths inch, whatever you want to sew with, um, onto this part, and then cut mirror images, and then put a seam in the back. Um, I I had enough because I planned ahead of time, but sometimes whenever I'm working with smaller yardage, I need to put a seam in that back. Okay, if you were doing the long, I'm sorry, the crossover waistband, you're gonna have one long strip like this, and you're going to want to fold it in half lengthwise like this, and then we are going to baste. We're gonna baste just these edges. That means I'm gonna go to my regular sewing machine, I'm gonna set the stitch length to the highest it'll go, and then about, mm, I would say half of an inch, or no, maybe a quarter inch. A quarter inch right here, so it's in the seam allowance. I'm just gonna put a long stitch on both sides. So this is what your waistband should look like. You have the basting stitches on each end, and now you are just going to fold it over like this to where it forms a V. So you are matching the bottom of one with the bottom of the other. So you don't wanna to go too far and match the basting stitches like this. You want them to be like right next to each other like this. And now that we have them together, we're gonna to baste again. We're gonna baste, and then you might wanna try this on and see, I mean, if there's like, if you have a print that's like a floral or um, something different and you want a certain side to be on the front, um, then just pay attention to how you baste it. Um, but now we're going to do the exact same thing, but we're going to baste from here all the way across to here so that we're catching all those layers together. Okay, so I'm going to head over the machine real quick and just do that with a long basting stitch. Okay, the next step is the exact same regardless of which waistband option that you are using. Um, you should have a waistband piece and then you should have your pants. And this is what it should look like is what we're going to do is turn so whichever side you want facing out um, on the crossover you can look at them i like this side and i'm going to put the side that i like facing down on the front and clip it or actually back up every so far i am going to take my back and my front and match them up like this so that i can get my quarter points because you're going to want to match this up to make sure that you apply your waistband evenly around your pants. So I'm going to see what's halfway, what's my side point. Um, on this one, you're going to want to find your quarter point. So I'm going to take that. Remember, I marked my half when I was cutting it out. If you didn't mark your half, you can fold it and then find your half. And then now I'm going to mark, I'm going to mark where this quarter point is. So now I'm getting the side seam because there's not a seam here on this crossover band. So I need one. So I'm just putting that right there. And then now I have my quarter points. So now that I have my quarter points, I'm going to see again which one I like. Mine are pretty similar, but I like this one better. And so I'm going to put them right sides together. So whichever is your right side that you want facing out on your waistband is the one that you're going to put facing the right side of your pants. And I'm just gonna put a clip right here where the V is. And I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna put a clip to match up where the side seam is. Let's see where I put the mark. So right now I have my waistband and it is, the, the right sides are facing and it should look like this. And I'm gonna to go to my machine and I'm gonna attach it. So you see the waistband is smaller than the top of the pants. So I'm just gonna, it's not a big stretch. It's just a small stretch. When you apply it, you're gonna to have to kind of get these edges to line up. I'm going through it, but I'm going to, before I even start applying it, I'm gonna do my V. This is gonna be the most important part that I line up, but I'm gonna do it on my sewing machine. I do not immediately start at your serger because it's likely to get off. And is what I'm gonna do is sew from not the waistband side. Normally when I put on any kind of a band, I like to sew with that band facing up so I have control to stretch it. But on this particular part, I'm actually going to start sewing on the underside. And the reason that I'm sewing on the underside is because you notice it has it's gonna have all this extra fabric to meet that V. So I need to make sure that when I'm sewing that I'm not sewing like a crease into that fabric. 
Um, cause if I sew from the right side, it's going to be so like nice and stable and I'm just going to go zipping through it and then I'm going to turn over and my wrong side is going to have like fabric munches and my V isn't going to look pretty. So you're going to sew from this side right here and we're going to just start like two inches away from this point. That's one way to start. There's two different ways I do it when I'm doing a V is when I start here, sew to here, put my needle down, move the fabric and then sew to the other way. Another way to do it is to start sewing from the middle. So two inches this way and then go back and then sew from the middle again and go two inches the other way. Um, the benefit to starting in the middle and then going two inches this way, stopping, picking your needle up, going back and doing two inches this way is that you know you started on the exact middle each time. Um, the benefit to doing it, just starting here and sewing one straight seam is that you're not having to pick up your needle in your presser foot and messing with it. I'm gonna do it with my fingers before we move to the machine. Um, and then I'll do it again there, just cause I really wanna reiterate how to get this good V. This is be the same if you're doing like a V-neck on a t-shirt. Um, so is what you're going to be doing is sewing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'll, I'll use just a straight stretch stitch that my machine has. And I'll start at this point and I want this seam. So it's hard to tell on this side, but you can see where this seam is. Not where my top stitching is, but where the actual fabrics seam together. That's what I want to meet on that V. And if you want your top stitching to be the center, then you'll want to center it up by that. Um, but either way, I'm going to put this right here to where, and then I'll walk this seam line to where everything is even. And then I'll sew three eighths inch in without bunching up any of the fabric, put my needle down right here on the center and then move all this bunch fabric behind me. And then as you're moving that fabric behind you, then you'll have a clear path to go to then now sew down that seam. So that's that method. The other method is to sew right here. So that way, move all this out of the way. Sew from here to that way. Okay, let's head to the machine. I'm gonna show it to you on the machine. I just put a, a pin through the seam allowance on the pants and then you can see where it meets the V. You want to align the very top of that point of the V with the very low point of the V on the pants. Um, so I have that on there and now I'm going to sew from the side of the pants. So right now I'm lining up the edge of that seam. And you don't need to start very far off. You really only want to give yourself a few inches. You're just trying to get that point. So you're going to notice this fabric is kind of folding. You have all this extra fabric and you want to just continue to move that out of the way and keep that edge the same. So your waistband is underneath here and this, there's all this extra right here. And you're just focusing on the one side at a time. You're going to sew until you get to the very middle of the V or the seam which should be the same. And then you put your needle down and then you pivot and line up the next side. And see, I had to like, when I pivoted, I had to move all this fabric out of the way behind the needle. So all that fabric was in front of the needle and now it is behind my needle. And this is all so super easy because you took the time to baste. If you didn't baste, then this part is going to be harder because you have, let's see, five layers of fabric that are all moving around. And especially if there's some athletic fabrics that have more slip to them. So you're, it's like a recipe for frustration. And then now we are going to check our V. And it should look like this. I have some basting stitches that I'll remove. And now you can do the traditional go to your serger, or you can just use your stretch stitch all the way around it. I like to use my serger for the main construction. So I'll go to my serger and finish the rest with my serger. Um, and then I'll, I, I did contrasting basting stitches, so I'll remove those. You don't want those to be seen um, from the outside. And there you have it. You have a nice, perfect V. Okay, now I'm at my serger and I'm going to apply the rest of the band. You could do this from this um, your sewing machine. I just, my, my serger is quicker and has a better stretch stitch than my sewing machine has. So I always prefer to use it for the construction of the rest of the band. So you notice that 
you have to stretch, otherwise your pants are gonna have folds in them. So you have to stretch just the waistband. You don't wanna stretch the main pants. Um, if it's easier, you can do this with the waistband facing you to stretch that band to bed. And it's not a, a huge stretch. See, I have this much to go and this much pants. I'm just tugging on the band. Now, when you get to the V, just remember to move the fabric out of the way, and you can use the stitches you did earlier in your guide. So we are doing the layered waistband, and to do the layered waistband, you need to cut out the V waistband part. There's one of these cut out on the fold, and then you need to cut everything for the full waistband. So that means that you will have the inner front waistband piece, and that one is cut on the fold. And that one would be out of a lining fabric or it can be your main fabric as well. And then you will have your um, inner waistband for the back. And that one's cut on the fold right here. And that's for your the lining. It goes on the inside. And then for the front of the full waistband, you'll want it out of your main fabric. And then you'll have the front cut on the fold. And then you'll have the back cut on the fold. So I'm gonna do the full waistband pieces first. So I'm going to put these right sides together, the ones for my main, which would be called the outer waistband. You're gonna line these up on their, the side seam. So I'm going to sew right here, and I'm gonna sew down here with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the inner waistband, which um, you can cut out of a lining fabric if you want to use some scraps up. And these I'm putting right sides together like this. So do you see how um, the back they go the back part goes up while the front goes down? Okay, so you should have your two waistband pieces. I top stitch mine just because my thread didn't match. Um, that's optional after I sewed the seams. Okay, and now you're going to put these right sides facing the front of the inner facing the front of the outer waistband and match these up. And now we're gonna sew the top of the waistband. So it's gonna look like this and I'm sewing around this top, this top seam. So I'm gonna take that to my serger or you can use a stretch stitch. Also, if you wanna put elastic in your waistband, now is the time to do that, um, you can just add it while you're sewing the seam, or you can do it afterwards, um, just using a zigzag after you've sewn the seam. So your waistband looks like this right now, and we're just gonna turn it to where the right sides are facing towards the inside and towards the outside. And now it looks like this and we're gonna grab our other waistband piece. So this is the front of my waistband like this, and then here is the back. Now the lining is a different color, but the seam is gonna roll to the inside, so um, you're not gonna be able to see that. Now I'm gonna grab my V waistband piece, this looks like this, and I am going to put it wrong sides together to where it's just one long line and the right side is facing out. And then I'm going to do like this. Oh, sorry, too much of a crossover, like this. So you cross it like this. And then I'm going to put it over the top of this waistband. So you want these points to all match up, and then we're going to baste them. I'm going to put one big clip right here, like this, and I'm going to baste all these layers along the bottom because I, this should be, let's see, four, no, this is six layers right here, and you're about to sew it onto the one layer. So there's so much possibility for shifting and slipping and sliding around. So it's just gonna make your whole life so much easier if you go and get a long stitch on your machine 
and baste. Now we have our waistband. It looks like this. I went ahead and basted the entire waistband because I realized, you know what, that's going to make my life just so much easier. I basted outside of the seam allowance because I really don't, um, I really don't want to have to like leave them there. I want to be able to remove them easily. So I did it about like between three eighths and a half an inch. Okay. So I have my pants inside out. This is the front where it dips and this is the back where it goes up high. And now I'm going to put it right sides together. So I'm going to slip it in like this. And before I sew it all the way around, I am going to just sew this V part. So to sew this V part, grab a pin or um, you can also grab a clip and you're going to put it, so I'm going to put it right here and then I'll show you. You're going to clip this V directly at that V at the seam line. Or if you've done a lot of top stitching right there, you might want to line it up with where your top stitching is so it looks like the V is pointing to your top stitching. Um, so you're going to line it up right there and then you're going to pull these edges around. So I'm going to sew on the pants side. I'm going to start right here about two inches away from this pin. And then I'm going to sew my normal seam allowance, three eighths inch down. Then I'm going to, this way I can move all this fabric out of the way. And then when I get to this to this pin, right at that seam line, I'm going to put my needle down, pivot, and then put move all that fabric behind my needle. And then sew two inches down the other side. Okay, so I'll take you to the machine and show it to you on the machine. So I'm at the machine, and I'm just going to work on this middle part. So I have my V, my V that points this way, matched with the V that points this way, directly down the middle. And now I want to sew on the pants side, not on the waistband side. And it's not going to be this hard because we have basted everything. If you did not baste, don't even try this step because you'll just frustrate yourself. Um, unless you're like magic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to put it on a stretch stitch. I don't want like a zigzag. You want a stretch stitch that so straight, like a triple straight stretch stitch. I'm going to remove my pen and you should be able to completely line up this edge right here. And then you just, you're going to have all this extra fabric right here. And you're only focused on this straight edge for about two inches up until you get to this seam line. Okay, now I'm ready to pivot. So I, Put my needle down, pick up my presser foot, and then just move all of this fabric out of my way and behind my needle, behind where I want to sew. And then now I'm going to line this edge up with the edge of the pants. I'm just going to sew a few inches. Now we have our moment of truth where I look at what I sewed and see if it's amazing or if I'm disappointed. <laughs> So let's see how I did. I think I did pretty good. So now I can um, sew around the rest of the waistband. I'm gonna do it on my serger so it's quick. Um, but before I do that, I am going to match up the front and the back of the waistband like this. Let's see, oh, you see, you, I have side points on that. Now I'm gonna match up the front and the back of the pants because I need, these pants don't have a side seam. Oh, I didn't do as amazing on my back. See, I caught some of the waistband wrong right here. So I'm gonna have to go over that. Um, but my, I did great on this side. Um, anyways, I'm just gonna mark my side seam by putting the front and back of these pants together like this. And then just marking where that side point is. I'm just gonna put a marker and say that's my side seam. And I'm gonna do the other side now. Mark the side seam on the other side. Now I have my quarter points. So the back of this waistband is going to be the back right here. And the side seam is going to be my imaginary side seam right here on the back. And now I'm just going to sew this big loop right here. 
Okay, so now I'm going to sew this on my machine. I'm going to start at my V, and I purposefully moved the fabric out of the way this way as I sew this way, and then when I come back around, I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna have all my fabric kind of pushed this way. So you're gonna pay attention to your underneath. It's not as big of a deal right now because you're not really um, sewing the exact point. You're just finishing the edges really at that point with your serger. And you're gonna need to stretch your waistband a bit. And I know it's a 3 8 inch seam allowance, but on this thick of a fabric, my, my serger knife is not gonna be happy with me if I try and trim this much. So I'm just gonna do the quarter inch seam allowance for my serger and not mess with it. So this is what it looks like inside. This is what it looks like when I turn, let me turn my pants right side out and I, you see I have all these basting stitches I'm going to remove them and if where you surged doesn't go so you're going to have a pucker there so is what you're going to need to do is extend these stitches until you fade them into your serger stitches or if you're not even using a serger at all then you'll just want to use that same stretch stitch all the way around so I'm going to go ahead and do I'm going to connect those so that there's not that overhang and then I'm going to go and remove all of my basting stitches I like to baste with of a very different colored thread just because it makes it really easy to find them and quickly remove them. 